Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about transgenderism. What? <laughs> That's right, transgenderism. It is uh, a hot topic. It is something that a lot of people have an opinion about. It is no doubt in the culture. You've probably and no doubt have been uh, around it or maybe have uh, heard some things of such. And so that's what we're going to talk about today. Yes! <laughs> Who knows? Uh, Jazz Jennings was a boy who decided he wanted to become a girl. And so he became a girl. Uh, and he is a transgender. And uh, he has a YouTube channel. He has a television show called I Am Jazz. He's the co founder of the Trans Kids Purple Rainbow Foundation. Uh, another one, an actor of at um, in the show. Grey's Anatomy is uh, Alex Davis, uh, another actor named Elliot Page. If you're into actors, those are transgender people and uh, who claim uh, this uh, concept of transgenderism. There are universal symbols for the male and for the female. And uh, obviously we know those quite well. Uh, I've seen them in the restrooms and the bathroom doors and you'll see those. But now uh, for the transgender person, there is a new one here and uh, a new one uh, what is a transgender person well a transgender person is someone who identifies themselves as a member of the opposite sex so that's what a transgender person is let me read you this article from transequality.org and uh, you can see it right here we'll zoom in a little bit for you and uh, trans equality you can see this website up here what does it mean to be transgender I want to show you this here if you look down here, you'll see this. Uh, I want to show you this little thing right here. It says, most people who were labeled male at birth turn out actually to identify as men. And most people who were labeled female at birth grow up to be women. But some people, I'm going to condense a few words, feel that their real gender is different than what was initially expected when they were born. Most of these people describe themselves as transgender and so I have studied this uh, subject of transgenderism here, and uh, here are some words that I come up with. I come up with these words that uh, occurred a lot, and I found and read and heard and seen a lot in my study of transgenderism. And here's the first word. Uh, it's the word change. You'll see this word a, a lot. Uh, the word trapped. A lot of these transgender people will describe their feelings, their, their situations, and they'll use the word trapped. Here's one, feelings. They use the word feelings. And a screenshot from a Facebook um, a page about the National Center for Trans e Transgender Equality. And it says right here, you can look at it on your own. An introduction to transgender people. Up here it says, neither male or female categories feel right for non-binary people. And so that's just one example of the many places that I found that word feel or feelings. And, and that's what they were talking about. And here's another word perception and so you can see these words over here they had the perception so nonetheless those are some words that i come across and um and those are some reoccurring words as you you'll find as you study this topic of transgenderism the purpose of this video is to just show you what the king james bible has to say about transgenderism The word transgenderism or transgender or gender neutral is obviously not in the King James Bible. You won't find that in this book. You won't find it in the Bible. Uh, but some of these words do. The words that we just looked at. What does the Bible, what does the King James Bible say about transgender people? The first thing, number one, that it says to a transgender person, number one, you are not alone. You're not alone. <laughs> I doubt that is what you expected me to say, but that's the first thing that I believe that the Bible has to say to transgender people. Many places in scripture tell about people, now listen to this, who were possessed by devils. There are many instances in the Bible about demon-possessed people. In each of these situations, each of these uh, um, people that were possessed by the devil have similar circumstances have similar things to say. The Bible has similar things to say about these people. One of these people was called the Maniac of Gadara. The Maniac of Gadara, and you can read about him in the, in the Gospels, 
Mark chapter number 5, I'll show you right here, verse number 8. The Bible tells us about here, um, it's about there was a maniac of Gadara who had someone or something trapped inside of him. And when you study the scripture, you can see that. Mark chapter number 5, verse 8 says this, Jesus was speaking, and he says, and he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And you can see that there. I want to show you something that I came across here on, um, on a video that I had watched. And I want you to see this, a man by the name of Alex. I was terrified of coming out. I was afraid of losing friends, family, loved ones. I was afraid of this discrimination and potential violence I could face. I, I, was I want so you to see right here. Let I me replay that. Coming out. I was terrified of coming out. Okay. I just wanted to point that out there. You'll find that uh, that phrase uh, coming out uh, just used the used to describe their feelings. You to describe uh, the fact of telling people that you are transgender or gay or anything like that. And uh, um, I just noticed that, and I also noticed how the Bible talked here in Matthew chapter five verse eight. Jesus telling this unclean spirit to come out of the man. Now I am not. Uh, um, saying that these people are demon possessed, but I am telling you that what the King James Bible says about transgenderism. It obviously doesn't use the word transgender, so we look to other words like come out of the man or coming out. I also noticed this about that man, that that man was exceeding fierce. Exceeding fierce. Matthew chapter number 8. Matthew Matthew chapter 8, verse 28. Let me show you this here. The Bible says, And when he was come to the other side into the country of the Gennesareans, there met him two possessed with devils coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce, exceeding fierce. The news is he dwelt coming out of the tombs. You'll see this phrase, coming out of the tombs, exceeding fierce. This man was exceeding fierce. Let me go back here to Mark chapter number 5. Verse number 5. I want to show you this. I think you will... Um, understand this. Mark chapter 5, verse number 5. It says, And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. Crying and cutting himself with them. I noticed that this maniac of Gadara, he had uh, inflicted self-harm upon himself. And what is interesting, what the Bible is telling here, is that this demon-possessed man was self-mutilating. Well, According to uh, some studies, and according to some studies, and actually I have one here to show you, and actually it is incredibly sad. Let me see if I can find it here. Uh, there are many surveys here done, one of which is right here. I found it online. It's called, you can read it with me here, The Trevor Project Uncovered Some Alarming Information About Gay, Lesbian, Bisexual, Transgender, and Other Gender Nonconforming Young Americans. Look at this right here. 48% of this group said that in the last 12 months they engaged in self-harm. That number rose to 60% for trans and non-binary youth. Even more worrisome, 40% of those surveyed reported having seriously considered attempting suicide during that period. Of the youth, people who identified as trans and non-binary, more than half said they strongly considered ending their lives. That is sad. That is incredibly sad, and I truly and honestly have sympathy for some of these uh, people, and uh, I truly do. Um, I want to show you one more thing here on this same video. The next man, I want you to listen to this man. His name is Paul. He calls himself Paula, and I want you to listen to what he says. I, I was so terrified that I wanted to die. got um, threatening letters. One of the quotes said... Uh, do us a favor, Paula, put that gun back up to your head and finish the job. What sadness for Paula here. I mean, you can see, and I hope that you're not hard towards people that have these feelings, but I hope that you have compassion towards people that have these feelings. And he, he mentioned about wanting to end his life and how other people... He even provoked him to end his life. 
Let me show you one more thing about the maniac of Gadara in Mark chapter 5, verse 13. The Bible says here, And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, and unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep into the sea. There were about 2,000, and they choked in the sea. What happened to this demon that was that came out of this maniac of Gadara and went into the, the, the swine? The Bible says this trapped person, this trapped being that was inside came out and it destroyed the swine in which it entered. Man, it just makes me see some things here about what the King James Bible is saying here to transgender people. And it is quite sad and I hope that these uh, the people with these feelings are able to see this and understand it. Uh, the people who have these feelings need, uh, they need a miracle. They need Jesus. Um, you're not alone. They are not alone. Uh, you, they are not the only people that need a miracle. Uh, they're not the only people that need Jesus to do a great work. For actually everybody needs Jesus to do a great work in their life. So point number one, what does the Bible say to transgender people? You are not alone. Point number two, God's original creation was perfect. And so the more you modify it, the more imperfect it will become. Man, this is so true. God created you as a boy. And he created uh, you as a girl. He created all uh, people, male and female. Very easy to understand that. Genesis 1, 27, uh, the Bible says, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him. Male and female created he them. He made two genders, male and female. And uh, that's what God did. To, um, uh, that's what God did there. And to top it all off, to put icing on the cake, a few verses later, the Bible says, And God saw everything they had made, and behold, it was very good. Look right here again. Behold, it was very good. God made a perfect gender. He made two perfect genders. He made a perfect plan and a perfect plan. And the more it is modified and changed and adjusted and added to, the more imperfect things will become. And so that is what the Bible is saying. Point number three, what is the King James Bible saying about uh, transgenderism? Point number three, it is not pleasing to God to dress or act like a member of the opposite sex. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse number five says so. Let me show you here, look at this. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment, for all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. We ought not to put on the garments of a member of the opposite sex. It is an abomination to God. The King James Bible says that it is not God's plan for a man to dress like a woman, nor for a woman to dress like a man. So, what does the King James Bible say to transgender people? Number four says, your feelings are real, but they are a result of deep sin. I wish that I could explain all of this. I wish that I could see this. But this is extremely clear in Romans chapter 1, verse 26 and 27. Romans 1, 26 through 27. A great passage there. If you were to read this passage uh, uh, with an understanding heart, being led by the Spirit of God to understand the Scriptures, you would clearly see that the feelings of a transgender person are real, but they are the result of a deep sin. You'll see words in this passage, I'll put it up on the screen here, such as vile affections. You'll see words right here, changed. Remember I said that that word transgenderism is not found in the Bible, but other words like the word change is obviously found in there. Uh, change the natural use into that which is against nature. See right here, likewise also the men uh, leaving use of the woman, burning their lust one toward another. Uh, the last word I want to point out here, working that which is unseemly. It's not right. It's not God's plan. They are real feelings, but they are a result of deep sin. And so here's the fifth thing. The fifth thing. What does the Bible say about a transgender? Altering your sexuality is not God's plan for your life. It's not God's plan for your life. Leviticus 18 verse 22 uh, says this. Let me show it to you lastly. And Leviticus 18, 22, let me get here to it. 
and 23. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind's abomination, neither shalt thou lie with a beast to defile thyself therewith, neither shall any woman stand out, stand before a beast and lie down there too. It is confusion. It is confusion. It is confusion. One more time. It is confusion. And as you study this topic of transgenderism, you will clearly see confusion all over. And here we see the Bible, King James Bible, Leviticus 18.23, talking about this topic, this, this uh, um, LGBTQ uh, kind of uh, topic here. And he says, it is confusion when we do so. Anywhere there is confusion, I believe that you can be certain that the devil has been there. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 that God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. And I hope that in some way, shape, or form that this video helps you to understand this topic or this what the Bible says about transgenderism. I hope that you will subscribe. You can click uh, there and do that. We'd love for you to do that. But more importantly, I hope that you will make the decision to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching today.